you all for joining us for Discussions with the Fashion Masters. My name is Deanna Hansen. I'm a certified athletic therapist and the founder of Fluid Isometrics and Block Therapy. And I'm being joined by my nephew, Quinn Castellane, a lead block therapist and the VP of Block Therapy. And our very, very special guest today, Eric Arsenault. Now, this is really exciting for us because it was almost a year ago that we had our Block Therapy cruise. And Eric has been a blocker for... I think a few years now or a couple yeah. of years at least. Yeah, like three, four years. Yeah. Cool. And uh, we had the pleasure of having Eric join us on the cruise. We got to meet you and work on you. And it was just <laughs> so much fun. So, Eric, you have a lot of really, really exciting things going on. So I'm just going to pass it over to you so you can let our community know what you're all about. Okay, great. Um, and feel free to rein me in. if I <laughs> <laughs> But uh yeah, I'm a vocal coach. I specialize in voice strengthening. I do a lot of rehabilitation work. My reputation is sometimes they call me a celebrity vocal coach, which is a weird title because I'm like, am I the celebrity? Or are you referring to the fact that I work with celebrities? But um, I'm, I'm not the celebrity. <laughs> but, but yeah, so I've worked with uh, famous singers like Angie Stone. I've been a vocal health consult uh, for Jennifer Hudson. I've... Um, work it feels weird to name drop but my clients include you know olympic athletes supermodels public speakers and you know the whole nine and kind of my claim to fame is i can bring voices back from the dead even when other people even harvard doctors say oh we don't know what to do i've been able to have some success with helping people get back on tour or back on the broadway show i've, I've worked with several members of the cast of hamilton um, which is crazy working with clients and I can't even see the show because it was so popular. And so, you know, so, like it'd be great to see, you know, what we've been doing together, but uh, can't get a ticket. But anyway, so yeah, and block therapy has really helped a lot with, with that because so much of what I do, just to, for a little context, assuming that not everyone here is a vocal expert or in the singing world, in contemporary vocal pedagogy, there is a focus on just training the vocal folds or the muscles of the larynx. And my approach is a bit different in that I view the vocal instrument as the entire body. And that includes the pelvic floor, the rib cage, the psoas, the lax, all, everything. And so you have to consider the whole human and that's part of the key. But you can have all the academic knowledge in the world, but if the tissues won't move and they're immobile and they're tight and restricted, then there's only so much you can do. And so I will sometimes have clients lay on the block or I'll introduce them to the site and I'm like, you need to do the whole, the whole thing, you know, <laughs> so that you can just be free to do vocal stuff with me. But um, yeah, it's been extremely helpful in that regard. That's amazing. And you're so speaking our language because of course, um, when dealing with the fascia, we look at the body as a whole when addressing any types of injuries or, or issues and, and knowing those cause sites. So it sounds like we're kind of approaching the body in a very similar way. Very much so. In, quite specifically, one of the things that immediately um, rang a bell for me is that one thing we both say a lot, I often tell my students, your problem is not a lack of talent, it's a lack of space, internal space. And when I first came upon your work, I was like, oh, she's saying the exact same things that, that I'm saying. And, and of course, in a, in a different context, but, but also paralleling very much. So, so um, to be very literal and obvious, if someone's caved in and hunched in tight, then yeah, your voice, your speaking voice, your singing voice is not gonna be that great. And if we can open up, and we both care a lot about releasing and opening the rib cage, then you get a much more resonant, much more free voice. And the voice, so much of the vocal instrument really functions automatically. The diaphragm will work automatically to support the voice if it is afforded the space to do so. And that is unfortunately seldom the case because I have a lot of students who come like this, like, why is my voice not strong? I'm like, well, <laughs> I have an idea. And so, and of course, everything is connected. So there's this domino effect of if you're clenched in one place, you're going to be collapsed and clenched in other places. So in a, in a sense, my technique is very simple conceptually in that you open up and then you retain that space as you sing. So a problem that a lot of people have when it comes to singing is that they conceptualize it as take a big breath and then uh, push it all out. And so you get uh, you know, you get that kind of thing happening. But if we can open up and then retain that space, uh, 
around. You know, we can move around. It's very voice teachery, but we can move around. Uh, we can move around freely, and we can move the vo the uh, voice in every direction. But but again, just because you know that doesn't mean your body's ready to do that. And so I'll have students who can't feel their rib cage open. And again, I have clients who are actually doctors, cardiologists, pulmonologists, and they'll still be like, they know this is bad, but this feels so natural to them because they're so used to it. And they have all these neurotic holding patterns of being clenched and, um, and everything from, because one thing, trauma lives in the tissues, you know, your body really does keep the score. And so with the work I do, it comes up a lot. You know, I've seen people in your chats talk about, oh, the emotions that are coming up. Yes, yes, because we do this thing in civilized society where we think that part of a sign of being educated or strong is your ability to not feel emotion. And one of the things we do to seal it away is we restrict our breathing. So we breathe to feel and we restrict our breathing to feel less or to try to numb out. And that's not just some innocuous thing we clinch in order to that we see a little way and we have to pay storage fees on that in the form of um like less like hindered function of of our muscles and organs and so i really do feel that um anyone barring an actual like severe crazy injury can learn to sing and i look at what i do more so as a form of rehabilitation to restore what's always been rightfully yours rather than me teaching you to sing exactly. So yeah, like oh. I said, I, I've gone forever. So <laughs> no, no, I, I just love that because um, my father, Quinn's grandfather, uh, was an opera singer in his earlier years. And so singing was always something that I, you know, mm -hmm. imagined I, I could do. <laughs> I, I'm great in the car when I'm alone. <laughs> I, I can belt it out. But what I love to do, especially if I'm feeling stressed and especially like if I know I have to talk because mm -hmm. I actually did some, some singing um, classes to improve my speaking ability. Awesome. And so now if I'm feeling, you know, really anxious, my favorite thing is to get in my car, blast the tunes, and sing out loud when no one else can hear mm -hmm. me. And yeah. <laughs> it, it really does bring that sense of calm to you because I mean, again, like we're, we're letting, letting it out. And uh, I just think that, I mean, it, it's so neat because your process is a form of rehabilitation for probably most injuries in the body because you are creating a flow just mm. like block is creating a flow. And, and really from my perspective, as a result of anything, that's really what we need for our fascia system is just to improve flow in general. And anything that does that is only going to enhance the body's ability to move, to release, to, to feel free and, and to experience life. So I, that's just so exciting. I think I got to take some classes. And I, I mentioned last year we were going to, and then yeah. like literally, like I think we got off the ship a week before disaster struck yeah, the like planet. The world kind of exploded. So <laughs> did it ever? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Quinn, uh, you want to chime in here? Yeah. Well, it, it, it's interesting because <laughs> even for myself, like I I, re I relate. If I need to have like a vent or a release, or I'm having a stressful day with work. Um, then I, I was mentioning to Eric right before we went live. I'm like, I literally will just sing during my breaks. I use that as practice, but I also use that to release. And there's also like, I don't know much on this, so I'm not going to like dive deep into this, but sound therapy. And I don't know if that's something that, um, well, I just think like if you're using your own voice to heal and then you expand your body you're, you're creating that sound healing within yourself rather than using an external sound to heal you. So I'm not saying that this is right by any means, but just from my personal experience, I feel a, a lot different. I feel a lot better. It's like you're, you're letting it out. You're letting out a release in a way. Um, and then it's, you're also activating and optimizing your diaphragm significantly because I just started to really get more into singing and music since covid struck and i've been writing a lot of music and i'm like that's all i can really do <laughs> it's like what else am i gonna do it's like i work then i'm like okay i'm gonna take a quick like 20 minute break so then i'll sing play the guitar then i'll get back to work then two o'clock strikes then i'll eat then i'm like oh, i'll sing that's literally my routine right now because there's nothing else to do and it's a really really good vent it's definitely helped keep me sane um but but as deanna mentioned like yeah i 
I need to get vocal <laughs> lessons by you as well when that time um, is right. Well, I guess any time, right? It, it's hard to say. It's like, well, I could just keep on procrastinating or I could just book <laughs> the lesson. <laughs> but uh, soon, so definitely soon. Um, but it'll be really interesting because I've never had vocal lessons before everything I, I just kind of self teach and I listen mm -hmm. to it. Like I've kind of done that with everything I've self taught everything. Um, so it'll be really interesting and a really cool experience to actually get taught by a professional and especially a professional that understands block therapy, the diaphragm, making sure that everything's connected because if we have a collapse somewhere, it's, that's not the only collapse. That's what's so unique about the fascia. You can, you can be collapsed in one area and then they're just going to go and uh, address the psoas, even though that's a major area that we need to mm. always address. But it, it's like you have collapses throughout your entire body if you have one collapse. If you're perfect, you're perfect, but nobody's perfect. So <laughs> we, we're, we're all collapsed within our body and that's why we have to find our major collapses to start off kind of unlock that black hole <laughs> black mm -hmm. hole and then work from there um and then that's how you really unwind yourself and optimize your diaphragm your psoas your pelvic floor your rib cage expanding your rib cage expanding your lungs etc no it's so true and one thing i learned from you guys was the importance of releasing the lower body i think i was very torso focused like kind of from the pelvis up maybe like femur heads up but um, you emphasize the importance of like addressing the calves. And I was like, okay, let's, let's see. But I could really feel an immediate difference from working the legs, feet, and you know, uh, quads, all that stuff. And so um, the IT band, which is not a whole lot of fun, but, but the results, <laughs> but the results, I could really feel more openness elsewhere. And yeah, and I had that academic understanding that everything was connected. But again, it's so different when you actually feel it. And also to your point, I have a lot of students, I don't promise anyone anything, but I have a lot of students who really notice spontaneous healing in a variety of aspects. Recently, I have a student who suffers from um, fibromyalgia and she was telling me that um, she, the art lessons give her hours of pain-free living. And she was like, it comes back, but for the hours after we do what we do, or after I practice the exercises and, and everything, I feel better. And I was like, I'm glad it could help you. And she was like, no, 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 no. The pain is completely gone. It's, it's not just a little better. It's completely gone. Um, I've even had a student in Romania, which might seem just kind of random, but he told me um, after a few lessons, I've gone two weeks without throwing up. And I was like, good, great. Me, me too. You know, but he was, he explained to me that he was battling cancer and I had no clue. He looked normal, you know, to my eyes. Like he did not look like someone who was, um, you know, in dire straits. But he explained to me that he hadn't gone a day without um, severe gastrointestinal discomfort in, in years. And that through the work we were doing, which I believe was because the diaphragm was massaging. And your diaphragm is supposed to do a lot of things. It's supposed to help to decompress your spine, massage your internal organs. There's so many benefits that people don't get from it because they're so, you won't believe how many students will actually, maybe you two would, how many students have said, this feels like magic. And it's, and it's funny to me a little bit because this is what your body was supposed to have been doing all along. It's not some crazy zany thing. You've just been performing at you know, a fraction of your capacity for so long that to actually feel your body doing the things it's supposed to do, it feels like magic. And, you know, and I, I get that, so it's, it's interesting. I, I love that because people often call say that about block therapy yeah. too. Mm -hmm. And I love that you're implementing this tool into what you're doing, but can you share some of the other exercises you do when I watched your video and, and you were talking about how you have this full body approach to mm -hmm. singing, what, what are some of the things that you do to um, get people engaged with their full body so that they can project the way that you teach them? Sure. One of our most, we did not invent this, but a principle that we use in the A approach a lot is semi-occluded vocal tract exercise. And essentially it's singing through a blocked mouth. And so, and you, everybody has seen the that, that number there, a lip trill. It's probably the most ubiquitous form of it. Like if you haven't done it, you've seen it. And the idea is that instead of just going ah uh, and letting everything come out because you're making sound against this resistance, it stimulates the muscles that help us to 
compress and support the voice, compress air and support the voice. And so it stimulates what I call the anti-gravity effect. In Italian, I'm about to get vocal nerdy here. <laughs> the concept was inhalare la voce or to inhale the voice. Now they weren't literally saying inhale the voice, but they meant that healthy singing uh, uh, gave the appearance of inhalation. And so they noticed that when people sang poorly in a way that damaged the voice, they would collapse uh, as opposed to the soprano who would no. She's, you know, there would be an appearance of inhalation and that's because there is a reflex when the cords closed in a free open space, the transverse abdominus is stimulated, the intercostal lats are stimulated. There's this response uh, uh, that's stimulated. And um, we try to train that in our students as the foundation. There are a billion and five things you can do. But one way we exercise that is with a lip drill. We also can use a V as in victory. So if you were doing um, a typical pop R&B riff, you would, you know, or, um, but if you like the way you look that much. And so it's very simple, but also very sophisticated at the same time. And again, to be very clear, the viewers watching this might do it and, and say, well, nothing, my body's not moving like, like that. Mm -hmm. And it's because if you're locked up, it, it won't. And so, excuse me, it won't. So, but if we're free in the abdominal uh, area, if we're, if we've released that tissue, if we've released the rib cage, then stuff should move. And so that's a big part of what we do. Yeah. I bet this would help with our rib releases, Quinn. <laughs> mm. You know, 100%. have you, have you dealt with uh, any of the rib releases, Eric, that uh, uh, is a yeah. common, <laughs> okay, and, and how did you get through it? So actually, you're right. This helped me a lot. I would do a lot of semi-occlusion. Now, semi-occlusion works like resistance training. So you can do lighter weight or heavier weight or greater and lesser resistance. So I would use a lighter resistance because a little tender for anyone who's had a rib release. <laughs> oh, there's many. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, um, like this is, and I had never experienced that before until I started blocking. And so, but luckily you, you guys had prepped me for, I had come across a video before it happened. And so by the time it happened, initial freak out followed by understanding, I'm like, okay, they, they gave you a heads up, but this is really, it helps to take some of the burden off by reintegrating the other muscles. And so part of stimulating this response is that you get a lot of your core muscles working together. Because what you can't see is my pelvic floor, um, posterior chain, glute muscles start to, a lot of muscles start to kick in at the same time. So since there's this even distribution of effort, no particular area is getting the, the, the brunt of the burden. So it helps to, um, I think some people freak out when you use this word, but it moves energy throughout the system. Because um, I know that can be kind of nebulous, but it you're moving, it's, pressure and muscles in motion and you're moving fluid through, I feel like it promotes more rapid recovery. And, and actually semi-occlusion is um, a powerful tool for vocal recovery. So it's, a, it's, a, it's, po it's potently therapeutic. If you have like a little bit of hoarseness, it's better than just vocal rest alone, yeah. Well, we definitely are going to connect people to you when they're really struggling because you know, <laughs> sometimes those rib releases are, are like, no issue whatsoever. And for some right. people, depending on the depth of the release and how far into the rib cage that goes, they, they can take quite a while. And, and I mean, as much as I see that lower body being such a binding factor, you know, as soon as you create that space, if you've got something else tugging and mm. pulling, now you've got this gap that has to get filled in and it takes mm. a little more time. I can really see how, you know, this mm. will really manifest a faster, um, healing overall for people because mm -hmm. yeah, they, they can be pretty debilitating at times. And, you know, it's, it's lovely because when on the other side of it, um, pretty much everybody says it's so worth it, but when you're mm -hmm. in it, especially mm -hmm. for the first time and you don't really understand it, it can be quite scary, you know, mm -hmm. especially like if you're having trouble taking that deeper breath. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And especially in the case of singers, you might be surprised because um, if your father was well-trained then you wouldn't have known this, but it's become very popular here in the States to 
focus on a breath that leaves the rib cage immobile. And it's, it's got the best of intentions, but it's lacking nuance. So they'll tell people to take a big belly breath, but people will fear any movement in their chest or rib cage as being like mm. it's pathologized. And so they're not getting a full breath. It's partially, I was talking to you guys before we went um, live about how I was taught a technique that I didn't realize it at the time, but it was stimulating my, um, like a panic response in my body because I was deliberately restricting the movement of my rib cage because I conflated that with what my teacher was trying to get me to avoid was this, this thing. But mm. instead I was restricting just the natural, the natural movement and openness of the rib cage that's essential for, that's your powerhouse as a vocalist. We know that there are a lot of different, I try to be careful about kind of siloing things as like the key because you need the whole thing but your, within your rib cage lies your actual lungs and your diaphragm, which kind of creates the floor of your rib cage. If your rib cage is not released, there's no way you can tap into the full power mm -hmm. of your diaphragm. And it's crazy how many times um, I give a singer who's, who's been trained, who's been trained, I give them permission to feel their rib cage open. And they're like, oh, oh, I can, oh, you know, like the gates <laughs> are open up. Yeah, <laughs> you, know, like, so, so, you know, they feel like oh, I, I can sing now, and it's like, yeah. Mm. So, um, yeah, it, it was great to uh, on the uh, in the intensives to. I, I just love when people address the complexity of the body because I get that it can be overwhelming to people, and you do have to kind of titrate things and give it in small doses so people can digest it. I totally get that, but there's a lot today in the vocal world of just train this one part of your body and you'll have the voice of your dreams. And I'm like, bodies don't work that way. That's not, that's not the reality of the instrument. And so you have to take into account, you know, the knee bone connects to the <laughs> chin bone, you know, like everything is there's, you know, all of that. So you can't really, it's so tempting to do so, but you can't isolate, you can isolate temporarily, but you didn't have to integrate. So to quote mm -hmm. Trina Bordea, my, my teacher, um, she says constantly, you have to isolate and then integrate. You can't just isolate and then <laughs> leave it isolated. We have to see how it functions with the greater whole. It'd be like mm -hmm. trying to like hit a hit a golf ball while sitting. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. I don't think people realize how athletic, healthy singing is. So that's and that's another thing. People are <laughs> people who know me. Are, will be like, what are you doing? A block, like, you know, laying on a block, you do these classes. You ha Even though block therapy is not in itself vocal technique, it's powerful conditioning for it. And so Serena Williams, for example, she's an incredible tennis player, but she'll do like aerial gymnastics. She'll do, you know, maybe Pilates or whatever that she'll do to condition her body weight training. And that's not swinging the racket. That's you know, that's the actual sport. So I look at it like singing is the sport, but I have to condition my body so that I can facilitate, so that it can facilitate what I need to do. Because I'm, I'm singing six to eight hours a day, six days a week. And so, and you will never hear me hoarse. If you hear me hoarse, then cry, because I'm on the brink of death. You know? <laughs> but, but whatever, because if the, if the body is functioning properly, the voice is really designed to go and go and go without it uh, suffering inflammation and, and hoarseness, you know? So of course I have my days where I feel better than others. I'm a human, but for the most part, um, yeah, I'm able to use my voice and I'm doing everything. I'm doing rock screams. In a typical day, I might have um, an opera singer from Belgium followed by a rock singer in, in the UK and then a gospel singer here in Atlanta. You know, it's, so it's, we're all over the place. And if you're not connected to your body, no matter how talented you are, if you're not connected to your body, you will lose your voice. And unfortunately, that's how I often come by my celebrity clients is that they're celebrities because they're quite gifted, but no human being is exempt from this law of nature in that mm. if you're not connected to your body, once it's one thing to sing a few times a week and you might sound amazing. Um, Cause the thing is, if you sing today, Quinn, and you get tired, you can take three days off and no one's gonna like sue you for right. that. But when you have signed a contract to perform in a Broadway show, you're doing eight shows a week, you know, or, or people don't realize if you book a big concert as a big name artist, you often get an advance. 
and they're doing all this promotion, if you cancel, you have to pay that back. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of, so I get a lot of people calling me in a panic saying, can you bring my voice back by like tomorrow? And I much prefer to prevent this from ever happening than to rehab people. Unfortunately, a lot of people, it's not real to them until it happens, I think, because singing is so, it's an innate thing. You know, it's, it's, it is natural and it, there's a spiritual element. It's, it's, it's magical as well, you know, but it's also muscular and it's, and it's athletic. And when people discount that aspect, they, they're in trouble. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that's just true of, of everything. I mean, you don't think of your, your baby toe unless you have a blister on it and it hurts to walk, right? Mm -hmm. So we, we take for granted this incredible container we have to express ourselves in life. And only when does it not function like we want it to, mm -hmm. do we actually give it the time and attention. And, you know, for us, I mean, we, we absolutely um, want block therapy to be the, the prevention for injury for people, but that's not when people typically come when they're not having any issues. Once they hurt themselves, <laughs> right. then they seek us out or if they're having other struggles. But, uh, you know, and, and God bless the struggles because that's ultimately what leads people to whatever modalities to take you even beyond your limitations. Because as you said before, we, we don't even know the inability to express and move freely until we know. Because if you've been walking in a straight line your whole life, and, and this is your mindset, until you actually have light in some other direction, you're, you're probably just going to keep walking down that hallway and, and not even mm -hmm. realize that there's doors you can open to expand and explore fully different worlds. So, And, you know, it's funny. I think, isn't that how a lot of us come to, to our work, you know, through trying to heal ourselves, you know, and through as we become successful in, in healing ourselves, we realize, oh, I, I'm discovering some stuff because I know a what you shared about your story. And I know mine is similar in that um, I had, uh, at 14, I had nodules, which are like calluses that form on the vocal folds. Um, and I caught them in an early stage where through vocal rest, because I, I wasn't a child star or anything. So I was able to fully rest and work with a voice teacher and I got better. But then at 19, I had a vocal fold hemorrhage, which is where your vocal folds literally rupture start bleeding and I was working with a famous voice teacher I won't say his name but I was working with a famous voice teacher and I realized I have to do something different because this sucks like <laughs> it's just destroying my voice so I had to figure out what 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 I, what I was doing wrong and through that this technique a, a big part of the A approach being developed I'm like super brand today of the A approach being developed was at one point I had a horrible teacher and uh, the A approach was largely born out of me trying to figure out how to restore my voice after he had broken it. And so, um, and I later found out he had a reputation for kind of breaking voices, but I didn't know about that, unfortunately. So, so I was a really great student to a really bad teacher, but um, yeah, I had to learn how to restore and through healing, I started strengthening and I realized I was far more capable than I'd ever realized. It's just that I wasn't, accessing nearly half, not even half of my potential as, as a vocalist of what my body could do. So um, that's why I think sometimes when I talk about my belief that er anyone can learn to sing, people think it's, you know, like a gimmick or, you know, or whatever. But I feel like if I can learn, like I'm, I'm often accused these days of having talent, which is hilarious to me because uh, I was literally laughed at when I first began singing, like literally, like in, in in my middle school, I auditioned for the choir and um, bless her heart, the choir director who was also the physical education teacher, one of them, she laughed so much, she she had tears coming. She was like wiping her eyes and she had to leave the room. I know it's wow. awful and yeah, awful. And even as she came back to apologize to me, she was like, I'm so, <laughs> I'm so sorry. And she was, <laughs> it was that bad. It was that, and she, you know, I'd like to think that I would have handled myself a, a bit better. But my point is, that's that's how bad it was and i went from that to um singing professionally as an opera singer getting record deals and all that kind of stuff and so and then the youtube thing and so um who's laughing now <laughs> right, 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 right. and you know it's funny people get amnesia so my high school choir director she didn't laugh but a few years later my high school choir director she said oh baby this, this is new orleans so oh, baby you're so smart. Just go and become a lawyer or a doctor or, or something. Like this, <laughs> this is not for you. 
And now she tells everybody, oh yeah, I had Eric in my class. I always knew that he had this voice. And it's just so funny. Of but course, she, hey. Yeah, so it's, you know, people, and, and, and I get it though now, I, people have difficulty to a lot of people who don't know a lot of the things that we know, they just don't, see, they don't have any vision. They don't see the potential of what the human body can do. It's just not real to them. And so there was this cognitive dissonance, even within my own family, my father, who is great, he, he, he's my biggest fan, but he would say, I, I guess you just were talented like this whole time and I couldn't see it. And like, no dad, I, I learned how to do this. Like, I guess you started believing. It was just so hard for him to wrap his head around mm -hmm. the fact that I learned to do this because we, it's just something that, especially in New Orleans, there's this idea that Jesus touches your throat or he doesn't. So, you know, it's like you come out the room like, yeah, oh, oh, you know, or it's, uh, uh, and you just don't have anything. And so for me to kind of, develop this uh, professional instrument and get all these accolades or whatever, they were like, we must have missed something. Like you must have been secretly talented. And I can't emphasize enough. My ego would love to say, I was just born special. Like I'm just, you know, like, but that's not my story. I, I learned, and I, and I do think of it as a gift. It's just that for some people, the gift arrives and they, and they, they can start using it immediately for me. <laughs> My gift arrived in pieces and there was some assembly required and the instructions were in Italian and French and Hindi. And, and you know, so yeah, to kind of put mine together bit by bit and it took a while, but um, still a gift nonetheless. But I think that's what a lot of people have, a gift that just requires some assembly and some tuning up. Well, and can you imagine if you had simply been blessed from birth with this voice you likely wouldn't have developed this technique to help others with it. And that's, that's really what I think is, is so important in life. Like we, we do, um, uh, what's the word, like make heroes of people that just seem to have these natural abilities. Mm -hmm. But I, I believe the people that, you know, work hard and build and thrive as a result of the lessons and the, the wisdom and, and the momentum created, like, they're the ones that are actually, you know, being able to impact others. And mm -hmm. it's, it's lovely if you, if you are that person that, you know, you, you just kind of wake up and you sing and, and you sound like a rock star. But right. um, the reality is, is the majority of people in the world aren't born with something that they're just going to skyrocket into fame with. Mm -hmm. So to be able to um, bring these approaches into a process in a step-by-step -step format gives everybody that opportunity. And I love that you, you say everybody can sing because I believe the same thing when it comes to fascia, mm -hmm. everybody has an ability to heal, to regenerate, to improve whatever situation they're starting from to get to a better situation to what end that is dependent on many things. But um, you know, the, the voice, it, it's a muscle and, and it, it's trained and scar tissue can result in it. Like I hear it when I listen to singers as they age and I think, oh, if I could just get my hands in there, I could melt all that scar tissue for them mm -hmm. and they could get mm -hmm. that youthful voice back again. And, and yes. so I, I love, again, that you're integrating this because uh, again, like really, we, we completely are speaking the same language and we're, we're both addressing the fascia system, the body as a whole and, and the breath, which is the foundational components. So um, it just goes hand in hand. No, it's, it's so, it's just so true. When I was at Xavier, I went to, I attended Xavier University um, in New Orleans and there was a teacher named Annabelle Bernard who was an artist in residence. She was a very successful, like I think you could say legendary um, singer in Germany. And I don't know exactly how old she was then. I believe she was like in her eighties. And what really blew me away was her voice was, 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 could rival that of any 20 year old. And she would, I'm not a soprano, but you know, but she would do this stuff and, and she would just, she would just say it's easy. But part of what she would go on to say is she would do breathing exercises every day and she would keep her body fit in this I call it what I do a peculiar form of fitness because you're, you're trying to, you have to build strength and suppleness and flexibility and muscles that most people will go their whole lives never thinking once about. Um, but it was, I realized my whole point is that I realized it's a lot in how you maintain yourself 
And she, they're, they're, the, the masters that I encountered, people who really knew what they were doing, maintained their voices well into their 70s, 80s, and 90s. Not only that, but they were notoriously long lived. And so I always found that fascinating. Like so many of the greatest masters of the vocal instrument that I've, that I've known lived into their 90s, sang into their 90s, taught into their 90s even. And they had such robust, they weren't just like sitting like these brittle, you know, they were, they were, they were alive and like robustly healthy and, and they would show off what they, what they could do, you know, with their, with their bodies. And that really stayed with me. So when I hear people in their forties or fifties who are like, Oh, my voice isn't the same, you know, I'm older now. I'm like, that's no, 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 no. That's not, I, I totally believe that blocking would help to restore so much. And of course, obviously there are many techniques that I do. I, I meet people all the time who are like in their seventies or whatever. And like, is it too late for me? And no, it's, it's not, you know, it would be easier if you had continued, you know, if you started training with me earlier and we were just maintaining. So we sometimes have to pull them out of the red, you know, and kind of like uh, often people suffer from vocal fold atrophy. And so it's a thing that people kind of see as just an inevitable consequence of getting older. And that's just not true. It is more likely to happen, but it's not so much just because you're getting older but it's because you've allowed time to pass without doing anything to combat, you know, so you haven't resisted in any way. And so, yeah, it just, it's just, you've spent more time doing nothing with it. So yes, atrophy is setting in place, but it's not something that has to happen. And I don't think people realize that. And also there's phonotrauma and cuts and tears and scarring of the tissue that again, it doesn't have to happen, but if it does, the voice is so delicate, but also so resilient and if you utilize, you know, modalities that can help to heal it and restore it, it's just that um, a lot of people are ignorant in the truest sense of the word. They just have no clue that there are anything that there is anything they can do. So they just kind of acquiesce. I guess this is my voice now. I guess you know, especially in New Orleans, you'd get the, uh, uh, you know, you hear that all the time, and that can be. I don't mind that if it's a choice. So the um. I don't want to be anything other than what I've been. Like, I don't mind that if you're decidedly doing it, but if you can also, uh, if you can also change it back, if you have a healthy voice is a pliant voice is a shape-shifting voice. If you're stuck in one place, you're probably not so healthy. Just like right. there's, you know, I've seen you talk about flexibility in regard to fascia. If things are released, there's mobility that results. And sonically, that's also true. You should be able to make, a variety of sounds your voice should be quite pliant and if it's not then you know you're not doing something right but it's mm. you know it's it's something that again is it's a birthright all of us have potentially have access to it even if you don't know how to access it in this present moment you know mm. cool Quinn, do we have any comments from people that's super interesting questions well, comments? well that that's even something that i've had questions about just just <laughs> like how how do people change their their voice so i've even talked to other um people who are into singing and i'm like how do you create a rasp intentionally mm -hmm. because like i'm i i always thought that it's like you either had it or you didn't have it right type of thing right. and they're like no right. you can train it so i'm like looking up on youtube like how to create a <laughs> rasp and everything i'm like if you could if you could hit that rasp at the right time in a song yes. it sounds yeah. it sounds really good um so yeah that, that makes a lot of sense. So you just need to have that full, I guess, what is it like healthy vocal cords, which is also in relation to a full body, healthy fascia system will relate to changing the range and developing what kind of noise <laughs> essentially you want to come out. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I find that really interesting. And of course you need to practice, but it's just going to be that much easier for you to accomplish what your goal is or your intention is if you have that room well, two to things. do so. One, the vocal folds are capable of multiple coordinations. So I think a lot of people envision the vocal folds or the vocal cords as being little dangly strings and they just come together, they vibrate. Your vocal folds are thick and they're comprised of multiple muscles. And so the um, Ariana Grande coordination is different than the uh, mm -hmm. Then the um, ah, 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 is different than that coordination. And you have something called arytenoid cartilages that you can learn to vibrate 
that's what gives it that texture. And even, and so my point is, these are different coordinations. Also, if I were to do, um, that's a different coordination as well. And so it's a combination of the fact that your vocal cords can come together at different degrees of pressure at different parts. And mm -hmm. also your throat can change shape. Your, the pharyngeal space inside, the pharynx, the soft palate, all that yawn space, it creates different shapes. I give an example a lot of like, if you think of Whitney Houston, um, when she was uh, younger, her songs were super 80s and basic. Any girl could have sung those notes, you know. Um, uh, uh, There's a boy I know who's the one I dream of. Like that could have been anybody, but what made it so powerful? There's a boy I know he's the one. She had so much space, and I'm not Whitney Houston, but she had so much space, and that's what creates that resonance and that forceful power. Mm -hmm. There's there's so many things. That, again, I'm being super redundant here, but. Your vocal cords can vibrate in different ways at different angles, at different degrees of pressure. Your throat can make different shapes. And these are learnable things. I look at it like speaking different languages. And so just because you can't, just because you don't know how to speak Japanese doesn't mean it's impossible to do so. And learning Japanese doesn't preclude you from continuing to speak English. And so um, I, even the teachers who work for me, they know it's a, it's a, it's a thing they need to be proficient in classical singing, uh, pop styles, rock. They need to know how to make these sonic shapes. They don't have mm -hmm. to love it. They don't have to. They don't have to be perfect at it. But they need to know how to go about it healthily because a healthy voice should be able to do these different things. And it's so much. But the other thing is, to your point, when exploring vocal folds and vocal cord strength, in my opinion, it is impossible to explore this healthily without a connection to the rest of the body and without having a certain degree of freedom. It's, it's impossible to do so long-term because the vocal folds, they just cannot work healthily on their own. The body has to be free to function properly to, uh, to moderate that breath pressure or else this is gonna become overwhelmed and you're gonna right. have problems. Okay, that that's super interesting. So, so two things um, about like the size of your mouth as you were mentioning, um, I also believe, I think it was um, that Queen documentary with Freddie mm -hmm. Mercury, mm -hmm. because he had like the bigger buck teeth and he yeah. had like yeah. the bigger mouth, they were, I think uh, his, his band members were saying like, hey, like, why don't you fix this? Or maybe it was like his manager, like you can fix your teeth. Like you have all the money in the world. We can do this. Yeah. And he's like, no, I believe this actually contributes to me being able to hit these high ranges or the power behind his voice. So that that's super interesting. But then also um, like when you're singing, are you consciously thinking because I'm still newer to this, mm -hmm. but I'm like consciously using my diaphragm and my core and my rib cage as I'm singing, because it, just as you said it, or else you're just going to strain your vocal cords. It's like all the pressure is going right there. It's like, you're, you're, it's, it's like going to the gym and doing a squat. If you're just trying to focus on your legs, doing the work, it's like, then your core, your, your shoulders, your arm, your head, your neck, like everything is going to get out of whack. So you need to use the whole body. So are you consciously like, building that power from your core and like channeling that out almost? So yes, but specifically in the air approach method, we look at three different mechanisms of support. And so we look at it like a pyramid, like it's, we call it three tiered support. And so the first tier, the biggest, fattest part, the base of the pyramid is what we call passive support. And it's the support that literally comes directly from your diaphragm. And so this is largely based on the work of Carl Stahl. I don't know if you're familiar with his, um, he's a breathing expert. He's kind of credited with discovering the fact that the diaphragm could be strengthened at a time when doctors believed this passive muscle couldn't. So if you mm -hmm. had breathing issues, they were like, well, just get comfortable because you're going to die. There's nothing you can do. And he was the guy who was like, well, actually, you know, you can, there are things you can do regarding like encouraging the rib cage to close to stimulate a more reflexive openness and using sound to help rehabilitate the diaphragm. But he basically discovered that a healthy diaphragm will work to support the voice. It really will, but that's just one layer, but it is foundational. The other thing we have is reflexive support. That is the work that your respiratory posture muscles do, your stabilizer muscles do. That's what your, the core muscles um, and all that stuff. That's when I, 
Z- mm. you'll see this movement. It wouldn't be so pronounced if I was actually singing, but you know, I'm making a spectacle of it now. But that's that's the abdominal muscles working and the uh, you know all of all of this stuff. And lastly, we have oh, so let me pause there. Reflexive support. The beauty of passive and reflexive support is that if you train your diaphragm to be very strong and if you train your reflexes to be very strong, you can let go to some degree when you sing, depending on how well you Mm. train. Because your body can, I'd say 80% of what happens when we sing, we do want to allow it to happen automatically because there are so many muscles in motion in that play. You can't possibly consciously control them all. And if you did, you'd be pretty robotic. In your um in your you know approach right there is what we call active support and that is the idea that you can consciously engage certain muscles to maintain that openness especially depending on what you're singing so tones have gravity uh vibration exerts gravity upon the voice i mean upon the upon the body in a very healthy way but it's funny funny you mentioned black holes before the vocal folds the more we the more intensely we press them together, the vocal folds become like a black hole that will pull everything down. And so the more big and burly and robust you want that sound to be, the more muscular effort and the more active intention you're gonna have to put behind maintaining openness, which is why classical singing, most people I think intuitively understand this, it's more physical work than singing pop. Mm-hmm. You know, anyone, anyone who's done both <laughs> wouldn't argue this, that because the sound is, bigger and heavier and you, you your body wants to close you have to, no no uh, oh no like you have to keep it yeah. you have to keep it lifted and pushed out as opposed to um uh then you smiled over your shoulder for a minute i was don't go sober da, 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 da. that's much easier than ah mm. uh, this it, they're, they're very different weights you know so it's it's different you know there's there's not as much effort involved in staying open for um for like a a classic pop sound versus a really big opera or rock sound. Muscularly, they're so similar. I don't think people realize that because we like rock is over here and opera is over right. here. Right. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. The muscular effort involved. There are definitely stark differences in what the vocal cords are doing, but the muscular effort, the gravity, the literal gravity of the tones are very similarly weighted. So. Yeah. Hmm. I don't even remember what the initial point was. Yeah. But, no, um, no, that, that's yeah. super interesting because you're talking about the three layers and I was just mentioning like yeah, the right, diaphragm, right, like, right. are you intentionally doing that? But I, I'm, I'm guessing and assuming from your response, like it, it will become automatic the more you practice that because like for me, I'm probably connecting more consciously to my diaphragm because I'm very conscious of my diaphragm mm-hmm. because of blocks. So I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm going to use this to my advantage and I'm going to see what's going to happen. But yeah, you'll kind of real realize like that's going to um like continually practicing it's just going to become automatic i look at it like like driving when you're driving when you're first learning how to drive it can be so daunting at least it was for me maybe i was just an anxious teen but it's like oh i gotta do this check this uh, uh." and now sometimes i'm like how did i even get home i don't remember (laughs) because you're automatically yeah things and so but you are the one controlling it it's not moving by telekinesis you're doing it but it becomes so natural. And you also learn to associate certain physical sensations with certain emotions. So now I'm aware of it because I'm teaching it, but it feels very natural for me if I want to go to a big place to engage my body more consciously. Yeah. Mm. I just want to jump back a little bit because as you were talking about those those folds, it it really made me think about people's hands. I mean, Mm. you know, we can use this this mitt like a mitt and basically Mm -hmm. you know we can go and grab things or we can be the classical pianist that has Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. control of every every finger and exactly where things are going to go and you know I I love watching people play the piano at that level because they're they're not watching where their hands are making sure that every single finger is on every single key in this beautiful Mm -hmm. synchronization it's to me it's it's coming right from their core from their center and Mm -hmm. and they're just going along and creating this phenomenal music and i mean i i took eight years of piano and can play one song but (laughs) (laughs) but i mean i I remember when i was young and and finally like you would kind of get that song and you would get that flow Mm -hmm. and then it would just become such a pleasure to play because you weren't thinking about playing it you were simply playing it and you're getting your emotion and your breath into the into Mm -hmm. the whole experience of it so 
um, yeah, just, just to know that like with, with your voice, as you said, like, just like with your hands, you can train these things to do pretty much anything if you put your mind and attention to it over time. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's like muscle memory in a sense. That's exactly, that's exactly what it is. Mm. Yeah. Super cool. Okay. I'm going to check to see if there are any questions. A lot of people saying, hi, good morning. Uh, tagging people <laughs> really interested. Um, love my books. I learned so much. Tremendous respect for singers. Uh, this is cool from Rachel. Actually. She said, we sing hymns during the worst hurricane ever recorded in the Atlantic. It was an instant relief. So that's probably tying back to when we were um, talking about like just it as a therapy, you know, like I actually use like it changes my mood, which I just find extremely interesting. So, um, but yeah, if anybody does have any questions, leave them uh, below here. But yeah. And I kind of see like singing is kind of like, you know, laughter. Laughter is the best medicine because you're engaging that full exhalation. Singing, you're doing the same. You're engaging so this muscle yeah. and you're, you're creating flow and, and movement and change inside yourself just through the process of doing that differently than speaking. And, you know, um, and I've worked with people, too, that lose their voice, lose their ability to project their voice at all when they're when they're, you know, afraid or insecure and they, they can't even make a sound. And it, it's just amazing to understand what's really driving that of course there's an emotional component but that emotional component is causing the fascia to seal up and lock everything away so again instead of having this massive expansion we've got this little tiny area to you know try to project our sound through and it's it, it's quiet and insecure sounding as a result so um <laughs> yeah. and i love that when i was you know training to speak it was through the process of singing that I, you know, learned to express myself. And um, also my mother, uh, she, she's had a hearing issue her whole life. So I think I'm just loud by nature. But <laughs> I don't have any probable problem like projecting really loudly across the room. So sometimes I'm called on that in a negative way. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a true thing though about the laughter. Uh, one of the best teachers I ever had, he used to say that you can learn everything you need to know about singing through laughter and yawning. And so, mm. yeah, and he used to say, study your laughter. And part of it is because really the, the key to, one of the keys to strengthening the diaphragm is completing the exhalation, getting that full excursion of the diaphragm. And laughter is very effective. There are so many techniques for this, but it can be, because we don't really have proprioceptive nerves in the diaphragm to feel it directly. Some people are challenged by, also by restriction, as far as like emptying themselves and closing things down so that they can, properly we refill but laughter is a relatively easy thing for most people to access um and then also though some people have difficulty laughing freely and that's like the thing that we sometimes have to work on and there are even um there's even some blockages with that and you get like a <laughs> i'm like oh no don't stand that's not exactly that's not exactly what i meant and so we have to kind of work through it so um yeah but laughter is there's so many vocal exercises based on laughter and and some of them involve just literally laughing like through ranges so it's i'm going to seem a little psychopathic but if you <laughs> you know it's 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 that kind of <laughs> you get that it, you get that engagement and the key is mm -hmm. to let your body be your teacher and we call this muscle mimicry in the air approach method is utilizing very primal natural responses that are truly innate and studying them acutely, like being extremely mindful and aware of like what muscles are engaging. How, how do you feel? Can you notice that there is firmness, but also suppleness, you know, and that the, it, you're not locking, but it's very energetic. And can you just study this and see if you can sum it up without having to just randomly laugh, you know, but um, laughter is a wonderful way to exercise. It's, it's like right under our noses, but it's a wonderful way to exercise the voice and to build, build the strength of your, uh, of your instrument. And I think I'm going to add that in to our way of handling the rib release. I've always got mm. a good dozen going through it at any, at any <laughs> given time. So I'm, I'm going to suggest to them the, uh, for some that are like really um, mm. unable to take that full expansive breath because those mm. ribs are just like screaming at them to do a little bit of laughter medicine and, and to see if that can stimulate the healing response so people can get on with their day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I can't, mine lasted for like a good, my right side was worse than my left because I had, um, I, it just, you know, I think 
this is probably common for you guys to have people with these imbalances. But I remember my right side was really, and it's still, there are still things I'm working on that I'm, that I'm blocking and doing stuff with because I, I was a gymnast when I was younger. I was injured as, as pretty young, but because nothing was broken specifically, the doctors were kind of like, well, you're okay, you'll be fine. And over time when I would work with body work specialists, they would notice things in my body. And I'm like, I know, but nobody, <laughs> like, I'm aware of this, but nobody would, would know how to fix it. Um, they would say, do you know that like your right shoulder is like, I'm like, I know I'm, you know, <laughs> trying to, trying to figure it out. Yeah. So, um, and so there's there over the years, there've been a lot of compensatory kind of behaviors that have built up. So I've been having to like, um, trying to soften tissues and let certain muscles that have been over strengthened, letting them, letting them kind of weaken back to their proper level of strength, you know, readjust maybe is the better word, not, but, uh, yeah, so that's that's the thing. But I remember feeling like, oh my! But everything we talked about was really helpful, and particularly, um, I would do some of these vocal exercises laying semi supine. And for me, that's not even an official scientific -y thing. But for me, it seemed to help when I was doing some of what we talked about laying on my back with my knees bent as if I was about to do sit ups. And so um, it seemed to kind of help me release some things. It, it gave me a little support i guess from the floor to <laughs> take some of the it just felt easier yeah so mm. that that that's a it may work for someone else but it, i think it was for like a good month on on this side that i felt lingering i was like go golly but when it was over yeah there's so much more freedom and it, and it really improved my my technique so I, yeah. i'm grateful for for it ultimately it was a tension um or a a a a, a you know, frozen tissue I didn't even realize was frozen, you know, mm. until it happened. Because I saw you talk about it, like I said, but I was like, I'm a singer guy. I breathe every day. Like, not me, but yeah, me. Like, it was, it was in there, you know? <laughs> yeah. well, that, that's also, like, really cool, though, because even you being who you are and mm. how great you are at, um, at a, as a singer and a teacher – you can still improve by yes. unlocking more, unlocking more, unlocking more, because we also have to understand where there's forces being applied on us externally. Well, and internally, mm -hmm. um, every single day, gravity plus mm -hmm. who knows what else we're doing, how we're sitting, standing, if we're working out incorrectly, if we get hit, like whatever it is, that's, that's yes. going to cause a disturbance in your tissue, which will reflect in everything as well. So that's why, we like still, it's not like you unlock your diaphragm and you're free and you don't ever have to do anything again. It's like, we have to stay on, we have to stay on top of this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and what I think would be really, really cool is one day, like um, having like a group of people, I have no idea if this could ever be like orchestrated or not, but like taking um, or singing or um, taking vocal lessons, doing like 10 minutes of block around or 15 minutes of block around the belly and the rib cage and actually gauge that in the moment and see, see what you can do in like 15 to 30 minutes from not even training your voice necessarily, but mm -hmm. just releasing and optimizing the diaphragm and the rib cage well, mm -hmm. and everything essentially, and just see how that will, uh, translate. So that would be really cool. I agree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The whole time that I was doing the intensives with you guys, I was just thinking like, this would be so good for singers. This would be so good for singers. This would just be so good for singers. Every, everything that we were, everything that we, that we did. So yeah. Cause some of it, obviously I'd used your videos online and stuff, but you guys were doing some things that I had never um, done before and kind of hitting every angle in some spots. And my body was exhausted in a way because we were going for so long. But once I recovered, I was like, oh, that's, I experienced new pockets of openness, you know? And so I realized that I had a little more. And so an issue for me specifically for my instrument is that the left side would open more than the right. And I experienced more um, uh, symmetry, like better symmetry uh, with it. And I'm still working on some, some things, but I can notice the incremental improvement. So, cause some of this stuff, it's been years of me just kind of getting used to being locked up and I'm only I've only in the past three years started you know um attacking it head on but the improvement has been very very noticeable with my vocal technique which is why I'm always throwing it at 
not literally like the one wood blocks at my student, but the most. <laughs> like, you learn this, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, like, people like it. No, but they, <laughs> the students to whom I've introduced it to have, have raved about it as well. So yeah, they're, I don't nice. know if they're watching now, but I know that they really, yeah, I've gotten really good results from it because one simple thing, and I'll say this and shut up. Cause I know we're like really over time, but the, that abdominal tension, just the, just your kind of, I don't know what you would call it, like that, that primary position that we start in being on the, on the belly. If this is a, a fact, if the so many vocal injuries that afflict singers can be tied to um, abdominal tension or they're exacerbated by it. So a lot of times singers think I need strong abs and, and you do, but they can't be locked. Strong abs for singing means abs that are, able to move in a, that, that are mobilized. We need that mm -hmm. mobilized tissue. There has to be, there has to be movement that isn't allowed to happen reflexively. The firmness is more in the rib cage, but that your corset muscles and the abdominal, they need to be able to lift and move. If they're locked, it's like trying to fly with a boulder tied to your ankle. You can't mm. move. And it's hard to get people to release because you can't necessarily do it just by thinking about it. If, if the restrictions are really deep. And so you can't just say, oh, relax your abs because you also don't want to be like, bleh, that's not what we're asking for either. Just like uh, to have it all spilling out. But laying on the block seems to often, um, especially for a trained singer who knows what they're aiming for, just laying on that for a few minutes. And when they get up, they go, oh, Eric, my rib cage, like it can move because you, cause you've released, you've relinquished that weight. And so now things can mm -hmm. move more freely and they don't feel like, because uh, it, it it triggers excessive muscle tension in the throat. I know it seems so far away, but when we're really locked there, the throat really can't release and open up. And so just that one position alone can really work wonders, you know, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wonderful, yeah. And you know, I always, I always share that, you know, the, the goal is to lengthen and strengthen mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. with repetitive concentric contractions, mm -hmm. we're shortening to strengthen. So when I was doing 400 sit-ups a day to try to get a six pack, all I got was a big belly because mm -hmm. I compressed everything mm -hmm. and then everything moved out. And then I was getting more constipated and all of this chronic uh -huh. pain and inflammation. And it was just a mess. <laughs> So, I get it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. So uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the body craves length. The vocal instrument craves length. And that that is so that's just so a, a thing. I'm not going to go into another rant, but yes, a million times. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Eric, yeah. I can't even thank you enough for this incredible interview. Thank you for having uh, me. We have learned so much from you mm. and, you know, it has always been my dream to actually sing and Quinn, I would love it if you and I could, you, you can write a block therapy song and we can sing it together once we had some training not yet that would be awesome if y'all <laughs> i need some yeah. training <laughs> so um quinn can you share how or eric uh, either one of you um how can we how can people find eric well do you know what that's that's actually a great uh question because i'm just going to tie in some of these last questions here and then eric can answer them live here so uh just to start off does eric teach virtually zoom for example Yes, I do. And if you go to my site, aapproach.com, um, A-A-P-P-R-O-A-C-H.com, you can find my booking information. I am pretty booked up for like the next six months, but I do have a team of teachers that all teach my technique and they're amazing mm -hmm. and they also teach virtually. Perfect. And we have Eric's website and his social media links um, in the description here. And if you're watching this on YouTube, it'll all be down below as well in the, in the uh, comment section. So uh, you can also check out his YouTube channel. It's incredible. I've actually Thanks. literally had a friend of mine before I even mentioned Eric saying like, <laughs> I found this guy for vocal. <laughs> for, and I'm like, man, like his warm ups and all of this are, are fascinating. And I'm like, I think I saw this guy sign up for block and then I was pumped. And then I'm like, he came on her cruise. So I'm like raving to him. I'm like, aha, uh -huh, I got to, I actually got to rip awesome. his calves apart. <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen him in pain. It was great. <laughs> oh, too funny. Um, so yeah, I, I um, highly recommend you all check out um, Eric's social media, especially his YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and then um, every then I, again, I have his website linked there. And then uh, just some other comments and questions here. 
they're just saying there's so much to learn from this, which is so true. Like I've learned a boatload already as well. Um, do you have teaching videos? Oh, one sec. Do you have teaching videos or do you only teach one-on-one? -on -one? I guess that was kind of answered in the YouTube there, but. Yeah, but I also do have um, full courses. That's also on my mm. website though. If you go to, I think it's called products or whatever. If you just scroll down, you'll see it. But yeah. I, have, I have um I have three best selling courses. It's, I feel so weird saying this about myself, but but I have three best selling courses. They're pretty popular and they're very highly consumer rated. Like they they have like five star, close to five star reviews, and wow. um which I'm pretty proud of. But you can kind of go through. I have a uh, phase one and phase two, and I also have a what I call breathing boot camp where you learn a more athletic use of this for like more dynamic, robust singing. Mm, perfect. Perfect. Okay. So that's all linked. Um, oh, this is actually interesting. This, this could maybe get onto a little bit of a rant, but this is kind of cool. <laughs> uh, what about vocalizing while blocking with the exhale? I'm curious. I, I feel like that might even be something more for Deanna. I don't, I don't know, but like, I know that sometimes I will, um, if I'm if I'm blocking certain positions, especially my solar plexus, that's a super important thing for singing. It's it's rein it in. It it is where your diaphragm connects to the abdominal wall in a way that we can really use consciously as singers. So sometimes when I inhale, I will delay the exhale by making sound. And I find it's a really good warm up um, to kind of like lift and then kind of slowly allow myself as I zzz or something like that. Mm -hmm. I won't be singing. It's not going to be beautiful. But, you know, but to kind of slow it down as opposed to um, breathing and then immediately just deflating. And that's that's the only kind of thing I've kind of toyed with in that regard because I kind of <laughs> I don't want to mess with with the proven formula <laughs> you know too much but I don't know have you have you experiment, experiment? I, I'm all for that I've I've yeah. worked on lots of like I work a ton in the throat on patients and mm -hmm. um, for some people I've had them like when I'd have my hands somewhere I'd have them engage in a uh in a sound uh -huh. so that we could create an added vibration so really similar to like when we're on the block and we start toggling you're just adding in another element of vibration mm -hmm. or energy movement to bring that much more movement in so i'm all for that and i mean how many times are people screaming on the block what's the difference i was just gonna say that i was literally i was literally just that's gonna say that <laughs> i'm like i'm oh. screaming i'm screaming on the block so many yeah. times i'm like <laughs> yeah you know you that is very good point yeah. <laughs> gonna, Deanna, we should instead just... of laughter medicine we'll have laughter blocking and yeah. blocking yeah. or something yeah Erica, the next... we'll have to get you as, as our uh, as our subject <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just do a screen block therapy for screaming everybody <laughs> scream for 30 minutes <laughs> that could probably be a thing but <laughs> yeah. I, think a thing. I think we're coming on to something yeah. The, yeah, the, yeah. the next challenge <laughs> oh too funny Awesome. Okay. Well, that's all of the, uh, the questions and comments. So yeah, right. that, this has been such a cool, uh, discussion and I can't wait to get actually started with you, Eric, because I'm not just saying that this is something okay, but that when it's a six month do. wait. So you better sign but, up now. <laughs> but I'm, I'm gone for, I'm going to be out of town for a couple months possibly. So mm. I'll, I'll wait till after summer. That's totally cool. I'll keep on practicing. I'll, I'll try. I'll try to have like something ready for you. <laughs> and this gonna be this like, was oh. great. And you and email me because like, Hey, I, I feel like maybe I'd, we could squeeze something in. Cause this is, this is really great. And thank you. Cause your work has really helped me a lot. And um, I have three blocks. Um, so yeah, I still need to get like a block buddy, in there, but I, I, I use the hell out of your stuff. So thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you. It's, it's, it's my recovery every night. Yeah. Nice. nice. And it's often my warm up in the start of the day too. I actually laid on the block this, this morning. So. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Well, yeah, thank yeah. you again so much, Eric. And thank you all for joining us today for this amazing discussion and absolutely reach out to Eric. Uh, it, it's, it's more than just singing. It's, it's healing your body, healing mm -hmm. your fascia, healing your voice. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, you might become a rock star in the process. So. <laughs> Awesome. So all of Eric's links are below. If you're watching this on YouTube, everything's below. You can find all of his social media and his website, but that's everything. Thanks again, Eric, so much for no joining us. We will keep in touch. Have an awesome yeah. day. You too.